So in this video, I want to cover how you can bypass Keyshot in case you don't have it. Because uh, of course, as we saw in the main video, Keyshot has this amazing line rendering shader, which works great. But if you don't have Keyshot, if you, if you have, for example, let's say Blender and you don't even have ZBrush and you did um, sculpting and modeling in, in Blender and you want to render lines. So, of course, I think this is a recurrent uh, issue with 3D package. A lot of people want to create a line rendering. So, each and every package, be it Maya, Blender, um, Cinema 4D, they all have kind of some solutions to render um, lines. But, but in case you don't have access to those, you still can do it another way. And I want to cover this in this video. And the way to do it is to use actually Photoshop to generate lines. So the principle of generating lines from any kind of, a, of a graphic materials, it's to run an edge detection. And we covered that in the main video where I show you how we can quickly create a detailed path from, uh, from textures. And we can apply the same kind of, uh, of technique to create our line rendering from uh, this, uh, this 3D model. So what I want to do is to do even a simpler render because I don't really need to have any kind of shadowing information. The only thing I want to have is the um, information that covers the, um, the, the volume, just so I can run an edge detection algorithm in, uh, in Photoshop. And uh, basically, it is uh, running a filter. So I'm going to render this at the same resolution I did for, for the rest of this uh, tutorial, which is at 8K. And for this, I want the, it doesn't really matter the settings I'm, I'm uh, using here because uh, uh, if you don't have access to set, to Keyshot, it's not, it's not relevant. Right. So I'm going to remove this, this. I want to remove self shadows. Just put all of these settings to the very minimum so it can run very, very fast. And, uh, you know, it, it, it could be just a simple OpenGL render at uh, 8K at full resolution. It, it would work. OK, let's use maybe just eight samples just for, for the anti-aliasing. OK, and uh, run. Ah, fantastic. Stop. OK, so I'm going to just find the right settings and I'm coming back. OK, so I found the proper settings. So as you can see, it's rendering really, really fast at 8K, 8,000 pixels in height. Okay, done. So I, I believe this kind of very, very simple render, you can do it in, a, in any software. So now doing this, I realized that, that I was missing some, some information about the geometry. So I'm just going to run a second, very simple render, just uh, with very, very basic settings, just so I can have uh, complementary information. And even with um, some ray, ray bouncing to, to have a shadow information, it still run very fast. So 
So back in Photoshop, here are the three passes we can use to create uh, the lines we need. So the ID pass, if you remember, and uh, the ID pass, it, it really it's one of the basic pass in any kind of, uh, of 3D workflow. So whatever you package, you'll be able to render an ID pass. So if you don't know, for I can't cover that because it depends on on each and every uh, 3D package, but you just have to, to run that question on a search engine, you know, ID pass for your package and you, you'll find how to do it. Right, so this is the very simple uh, render, which has face orientation, but the problem is that, for example, right here and right here, we have the same value, so we won't be able to, uh, to deduce to, uh, to detect the edges. So here's the second pass. It's a bit noisy, but I think it won't be a problem. And if really it is, I'm, I'm going to run uh, that pass again at a, a larger number of samples. So now I just want to make a copy of the third to make sure I'm not reading anything. So let's start by the simplest, this one. So I want to turn it into, into a smart object. Uh, this will allow me to go back and forth uh, into the settings of each filter, which is very convenient, and even change the stacking order. So let's go into um, filter gallery. So there is either this photocopy filter. We'll see if it gives something. So it's entirely black. I, I think this is a, a matter of a... Of, I'm thinking at the same time, I think this is a matter of a contrast. So let's try maybe something a bit violent like that. To see. Okay, and as you can see, because it is a um, smart object, you see my adjustment is here, and at any moment I can double click on the uh, effect and adjust it in real time. Filter gallery. Okay, so. It doesn't work very well. Why is that? Photocopy, details, darkness. I want to try that one first. So let's continue to adjust. Maybe, maybe we can, um, it's weird run a high pass to see. Okay, let's run a high pass. Maybe do another adjustment and see what we have filter. And I, I want to share this uh, struggle with you because this is what I do most of the time when I'm looking for, for a new solution. I'm just spending time to trying to solve the problem and uh, find a solution. So as you can see, the edge detection is here, but it's not contrasted enough. And I, I fear that we'll, we'll have a lot of noise. So I just want to try to remove that, that uh, to get more resolution here. But if it doesn't work, we will try that. Darkness and details. Details at max, what it gives. Okay, so details at max 
it creates uh, huge, huge lines. Okay, so let's try this just to see. Right, so now you can't see, probably you can't see anything if I'm zooming way, 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 way in, we can see the, um, the effect. So let's, let's adjust, let's adjust that. Okay. And now I'm going to invert. Right. So this, this is not too bad. We already have something. So now what is great with this, um, smart object thing is that I can just copy that layer, control G, you know, and just come into some of the settings and see what it, what it does. So for example, let's say I want to remove this, this high pass, this high pass filter. Let's try what it, what it does. Right. So it's, it's cleaning a lot. It's, do, it's doing a lot of cleaning. We are losing some definition, but at the same time, it's way cleaner. So why not? It can be useful. So let's duplicate this again. And now I want to try uh, to um, have maybe um, a smaller line. Smaller line means maybe I need to adjust uh, my levels, I believe, here. No, I don't think so. Uh, invert level, 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 level. So maybe this is in the filter gallery itself. Um, Yeah. So one, we don't have anything, I think. One, we are losing. You can't see that. Yes, you can. So one, it's really, really tiny. So let's go with one just to see what it does. OK, so it creates really, a really tiny line. It's not super clean. It's a bit busy. It's a bit choppy. But uh, it might be useful later on. So I have these three kinds of, uh, of lines. So I'm going to now convert this path into a smart object. And we'll try to uh, copy. So to copy a smart filter, you just have to control shift alt click on the um, on these smart filters. And you see there is this, this icon, these double circles icons, there is there. So now I can just move this on another layer, which is a smart object. See, I can't drop this, uh, these smart filters here. So I'm just going to drop them on this layer. Right, and uh, I was expecting something like that, but anyway. Let's remove some of these elements. Levels. Mm. Uh, what the hell? Just I, I think I, I I made a mistake. So let's try that again. Okay, this wasn't the proper layer. So. Let's turn this into a smart object, convert to smart object. I'm going to, okay. This wasn't the correct place in the stack. Okay. Sorry, sorry for the mess. Okay, it's better. Levels. So right now, let's see with this high pass. Okay, 
as we can see, it's super busy. The render is very busy. There is a lot of noise, so it's not super useful like that. So I'm, I'll try to clean this, uh, this render. So to clean, I'm going to use um, a brew, a smart brew. Just going to run the default settings here. And I'm going to move it at the bottom of the stack. So smart blue here. Just to see if I can clean this render. And if I can't, I'm going to do another pass and uh, just put higher settings. So as I move this uh, filter at the bottom of the stack, right now Photoshop need to re recompute all of the uh, elements, so it, it takes a bit more time. Right, so I'm going to disable all of this layer just to make sure I see what I'm doing. Okay. It's very noisy. I don't know if I, I will be able to, to clean that without uh, losing my edges. Okay, so instead of uh, losing my time because, you know, using, for example, some of these filters for noise removal, like uh, typical dust and scratch, I might be able to remove this noise, but it's going to be too much work, too much computing time. So I'm just going to head to Keyshot, just uh, allow Keyshot 15 minutes to make a clean render of this geometry, very clean render that you can do with any 3D package, you know, it's just a basic clay render. It's uh, the simplest material possible with absolutely no, no reflection, no glossiness. It's just to have uh, basically a one to three read and uh, be able to, uh, to run edge detection. So let's do this. And I think I might even do uh, a simple, um, a, a simple lighting than that because right now we have some uh, hard shadows and these hard shadows they are going to mark and to create uh, maybe busy lines or the lines so I'm, I'm going maybe to use just a, a very uh, diffuse environment so I'm rather I'm rendering this in Keyshot and uh, I'm, I'm get back to you okay so back in Keyshot I'm sharing my thoughts with you uh, guys in real time because this is the first time I'm doing this and uh, I think it can be interesting uh, just to, to show you uh, what I'm trying to fix uh, the problem I'm, I'm facing. So uh, I tried with this uh, completely clean white environment, but uh, I think I'm still going to have the same kind of problems. Like for example, between this surface and this one, I might have some difficulties to uh, to get uh, proper edges. So, well, this one, I think this, this render could give potentially a good, a good result, but uh, maybe we could try just something a bit different, which is with, with an, a more directional lighting, but without any hard shadows. As, as you can see, the, the shadows there are quite soft. So it, by setting a radius, a radius on an edge detection algorithm, on an edge detection filter, it will, I think, allow us to uh, 
get rid of those information and only keep the information about the ages hopefully and what i'm looking for too is what we called what we call a good one two three read which is i would like to have like for example on top facing uh, geometry one value on camera facing geometry another value and on the fr on, le on the side facing geometry a third value so this way it will be easier for for edge detection to uh, differentiate all the faces right so another solution could be to use just two paths maybe this is what i'm going to do so i want to run this at better resolutions i think at 32 samples here in keyshot i i think i might have just just enough uh, clean surfaces for for it to work in uh, in photoshop Okay, so I'm going to queue that control U. And now maybe I can use another lighting, just a, a top lighting. Maybe this one. different angle just to see if I'll get better results and maybe also I can mix both of these passes to uh, really get a clean map of uh, each uh, surface and at the same time I'm going to run another pass in Keyshot in case your software as you see what I'm trying to do here basically is to obtain a map on of uh, each uh, each surface I want to be able to dissociate, to dissociate each of these edges. And there is a map in Keyshots that already exists, which is very convenient, which is the um, geometric normal pass. And I'm thinking right now that maybe this is the best solution of all. Maybe this is the one pass that's going to give the, uh, the, uh, the best result. So I want to run that pass at the same time on this, uh, on this new render. And uh, when it's done, I, I'm going to import uh, these three passes in Photoshop and we'll see what we can do. So here are the two passes that I did. So for some reason, I, I, I don't know what I did. One, one of these pa the passes didn't render or, or is missing, but I have these two passes and I think it's perfectly uh, enough for what we want to do. So let's try to just um, copy, convert this to a smart object and copy our stack of filters onto it. Right. And right out of the box, this is, this is not bad. Not bad at all. So I'm going to just make a copy and maybe change these filter settings to to get larger lines photocopy let's move this to uh, four okay okay so this that way we have like two different passes from this uh, this file here and let's try with this one convert to smart object copy this stack So it's still a bit noisy. This one is still a bit noisy. So I'm going to clean it first. So um, let's clean it a bit with filter, noise, maybe dust and scratches. No. Filter, noise, uh, debacle. Mm. 
no uh, maybe blur surface blur maybe that one is better okay. let's try this okay so i'm going to rasterize convert to a smart object again just so i can copy past the uh, stack of filters because otherwise the um, current uh, filter i had i think it would have, have been uh, erased okay it's a bit better and i don't need all of the edges you know it's just just to have complementary edges just in case i'm missing some of them with this uh, this pass here so just for the fun let's try to uh, okay and also this pass here i think this one could give some interesting results for outlining so i want to just once again convert to smart object and uh, copy the stack into it Maybe at this high pass, I don't know if it's going to uh, to help or not. No. I want to remove some of these uh, filters and maybe try to change the settings. So let's. Uh, do a larger edge detection because I would like to use this path for for outlines. And it's weird. I don't understand why I have this. Okay, so let's debug this tag. Because it doesn't it doesn't match what I see Ah, okay. I don't exactly know what's happening. Okay. I think I understand. So what I want to do, uh, I want to make a copy just to memorize the, the stack here but I'm not going to use that. I want to rasterize this layer again and uh, add black and white filter on top of it and see if I can bring more interesting contrast. Maybe this one. And uh, I'm inserting a color balance and I want to see if I can okay, change the balance a bit. Okay, let's see. I'm going to merge everything, convert this back to smart object, and copy my stack, my stack onto it. This is a bit better. Okay, boy. Well, uh, obviously, I, I would need to spend a little more time on uh, on the setting. May, maybe come by hand and select each of these shape and adjust the value so the edge detection works better. But okay, just for the fun. Okay, I want to prepare all of my passes and uh, just do a quick compositing to see. 
the kind of a line I can extract. Okay, so let's take that, let's take that one, make a copy, and see if I can uh, get larger lines just for a base. What happens if I'm moving this to four? Let's say four. Okay. Now put this on multiply. Okay, I'm grabbing a brush and now I can start to do the, the same work that I was doing in the tutorial. Just quickly come and start to adjust. The values and the, and the, um, the width of each line. And I just want to stay quite rough right now. So I think I will have some some real work to do in the foreground to actually remove a lot of the noise which is here. But okay, let's continue. Multiply invert mask. And I mean, as a start, just to to have something underlying lines to start drawing on top of it, uh, it could already be uh, enough. But if I want to make sure I'm I'm lazy until the end and avoiding uh, to uh, draw anything by hand until I I have exploited all I can from this uh, this render, I just can continue like that. Let's see with this outline, multiply, invert. This one, I just want to keep it like keep it like that. I don't want to put it on multiply. Just to come in here and uh, and adjust um, the level of details, change a bit of the nature of the lines, start to slowly build up with the same process I, I used before. You know the the amount of imperfection I'm bringing each time. It's it starts to uh, give a bit more character to this uh, to these lines. Yeah. Okay. So this one seems like a good option to uh, to clean, for example, the uh, the details in the boats. Uh, 
files. Let's clean this dude too. It's very noisy. Okay. So now I've lost a lot of the details, but going to bring that back by just copying this layer, emptying the mask, putting it on multiply. And I'm going to also adjust the levels to make sure I'm, I'm removing the, um, the high frequency details that are a bit, a bit too noisy. Let's see. Now I can come back in here and maybe um, try with the high pass. No, it's bringing more noise. But I'm going to run another surface blur on top of the stack and then I'm going to move it at the bottom. So let's move at the very bottom of the stack just to see if I can quickly remove this noise here. Okay, I'm inverting the mask. Okay, I'm going to bring back some of these details. And what I'm trying is just to get an, just enough of an organic feel to begin with. And obviously the, the solution with KeyShot is, is uh, we are okay, it's, it's more effective, it, it's faster, it, give, it gives better results just right off the box. But um, if I were to draw on this, uh, on this uh, lines here by hand, I would like to have just something a bit cleaner to start with. Not really cleaner, but something with more, just with more life, just more organic. So let's put this on multiply again, invert. Okay. Bring some of these outlines back. start to connect the outlines with the other lines so it doesn't look like paper cut. And I, I, want, I don't want to do this right now, you know. I don't want to zoom, to zoom in to, uh, to come and see what I'm doing because I want to concentrate on, on the overall uh, reading of the, of the drawing. Right, so let's, let's attempt to uh, do a bit of cleaning by bringing um, a level adjustment layer. No, and, adjust it so it removes some of the unwanted details. Okay, and now I'm going to put that on like lighten and invert the mask. Okay, just start to, to clean. Just remove the noise. So once again, it is it is indeed more work than using the uh, the renders from uh, from KeyShot, but it's just going to take a bit more time.
And for you guys, I'm maintaining a, a full stack of layers just to make sure that you, you can uh, access the files and see what I'm doing. But if, at, if it were just me on my own, obviously I would uh, um, merge this layer. Always keep my, uh, my original uh, lines on top of everything. Just to make sure I can continue to, uh, to get back to them when I need. Right, like, like now, invert and just bring back details where I need them. Okay, so can I get, can I get this guy? I think this one is kind of an outline, so I'm going to copy it on top, clear the mask, invert, and more carefully, I'm coming here. Just to help to read the silhouette, mark it. Right, so okay, I don't want to redo the full uh, the full thing from scratch, but as you can see, even though it's uh, a bit more work to do this uh, just in Photoshop with uh, edge detection uh, filters, it's it's still an, it's still a viable option if you if you already are a penciler and you you already uh, have a drawing technique, you know, it just can help you to uh, to have something um, to uh, to clean your, your drawing from. So I hope this uh, bonus video is, uh, is helping and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.